A few of us were very interested in the stall and spin characteristics of the Bear Hawk aircraft should you get yourself into that situation. Now, most of us do some stalling during the initial phase one testing. I'd done some myself. I'd already established that at idle power and a forward center of gravity, the elevator tended to lose authority and that that prevented the main wing from stalling on my aircraft. Then by adding partial power, I was able to regain elevator authority and that that would induce a full wing drop stall. Quite a few years ago, Bearhawk owner Eric Newton and test pilot Lee Taylor did a series of spin tests on Eric's Bearhawk aircraft. They used a forward center of gravity to explore the spin envelope and they established very quickly that the Bearhawk will spin if induced to do so and that once in a spin, it will spin quite quickly. They also established that it recovers easily and quickly. They've posted a video of this on YouTube. You can search for that video using the search term Bearhawk spin testing. So more recently, Bearhawk owner Grant Bissett wanted to explore the envelope on his aircraft using a more aft CFG. Now Grant's aircraft has an IO360, he used a centre of gravity of 19 inches and he used an all-up weight of 2,000 pounds. On Grant's aircraft, that represents a typical weight that he might be found flying into a backcountry airstrip with. So Grant initially performed a series of basic stalls using flaps up and idle power. These resulted in the wing repeatedly stalling and then recovering whilst developing a sink rate of around 1500 feet a minute. Then with the addition of partial power, it's resulted in a wing drop stall to the right. So just to recap that point, with no power, there was no wing drop. With the addition of partial power, there was a mild wing drop. So the setup for the spin was very similar, but with three stages of flap and partial power. You'll see that the aircraft initially begins to yaw to the right. At this stage, with the stick hard back on the backstop, Grant then adds in a little bit of right rudder. So you can see Lake Harweir in the top of the picture there. The addition of right rudder induces a spin to the right. Grant allows it to continue through one full rotation. And there's Lake Harweir once again in the background of the picture. Grant wanted to make a couple of points at this stage. The first one being that the Bearhawk is not an aerobatic aircraft, so he didn't see any need to do multi-turn spins. He was interested in the spin entry and the spin recovery. He has established that on his aircraft, under those conditions, it required control inputs to induce a spin. Secondly, in order to represent real world conditions, Grant used three notches of flap for the spin entry. During the recovery, what that meant, in order to avoid an overspeed on the flaps, he's immediately retracted to flaps up. Here's a second look at it. So there you have it. I found this to be particularly interesting. The takeaway points, particularly for myself, are that the Bearhawk is a very stable aircraft with good handling characteristics. But like all aircraft, it does obey the normal laws of physics. If you take your eye off the ball, it's capable of dropping a wing or even spinning. But if you apply the normal recovery techniques, it will recover quickly and easily, assuming you have sufficient height, of course. So there you go. Have fun, go out and enjoy flying your Bearhawk and stay safe.